Hello everybody, I'm John. This is the Midnight Paint and Body YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to be cleaning up another rusty but trusty old Dodge work truck. So here's something we haven't worked on before. I mean, obviously I've worked on a lot of these trucks, but uh, not a 5500. So it's exactly the same, only it's on a heavy chassis. This is a, a farm truck, a hard work and work truck. The fellow that owns it obviously wants to keep her alive because we are living in the day and age of $100,000 pickup trucks. And I don't know who's buying them, but uh, it's not me and it's not most working men. So, so what we have here is a 2008. 10? I don't remember. I better, I, I should, I should research this stuff before I talk to you guys. This truck is a 10th month of 07, so no 07. Uh, yeah, still a good, still a good solid truck. She's in, you know, reasonably good shape. Reasonably low mileage for one of these trucks, so definitely worth saving. He did just put a new deck on it recently, so I'll kind of do a quick walk around and show you guys what we're going to be doing this round. A uh, few little things, uh, new upper bumper cover. I've got down on my estimate for new front fenders. We're going to get these flares off and see what's going on under them. But most often on these trucks, they need fenders. Um, yeah, this one's showing quite a bit of rust there. You know, I'm not going to replace them if they don't need to be, but Pretty sure they'll need to be. So there's that. We're gonna sandblast and paint up the wheels. And we're painting the roof. Now, if you look at this door, so look at our gap here. That's smashed straight up against the fender. And then look at our gap here. So we get really wide at the top. So I'm pretty certain what's happened on this one, it's probably been backed up into something and it's been overextended. So now you get into here, you can see how this hinge is pulled away from the body. So our hinge pillar is bent. So we're going to need to get this door off and see exactly what's going on in there. Um, for the most part, that hinge needs to come back. I expect that whole hinge bender pillar needs to be kind of rolled. So it's damaged. Our rear door is just too far gone to bother repairing when you see them that bad by the time you sandblast that there's gonna be nothing left of that inner so the customer actually got a good used door but he forgot to bring it this morning so he's gonna bring that out later today and then just a few other little things we're gonna sandblast and paint the rocker panels so we're not painting the whole truck i don't have any paint time on the other side other than the fender but see what the condition is I might just give it a quick quick sand right through and just paint the whole thing for him. we'll see we'll see how that goes I'm not promising anything but uh, it's a good customer and uh, always brings me his work so I want to take care of him so anyway guys enough yapping I am gonna do a little bit of tear down on this thing I'm gonna get these flares off get the headlights out and just kind of see what we're working with bring you guys back to show you what we're working with so a little bit of tear down here on the Dodge guys so got the front fender off of this side so we'll kind of show you what we have to work with here so you can see we've got just surface rust all the way around the lip and then we've got a little bit of rust starting all around these holes where the retainers go and of course where the flare is rubbed because everything was out of line there so these fenders are not bad at all, but I'll kind of explain how we make that determination of, you know, do we replace or do we repair? Now, this fender is still solid. It's definitely worth fixing, but I'm going to need to, you know, sandblast the lip, completely strip, prime, prep, and paint, as well as the inside. Now, for this to last, I would sandblast that complete inside lip and prime in there as well so we have absolutely no rust on this fender. 
So you have to kind of determine, um, I need to look up price of the new fenders. I have new fenders to pick up. They're at the freight company right now. I think they're about 300 bucks a piece. I have to double check on that. So what you have to think is how long am I going to spend repairing this one? You know, if I'm going to spend four hours and bill a customer four hours at my shop rate, that's 300 bucks. So in this case, is it a better repair to repair this one or to put the new vendor on, which is going to cost about the same as repairing this one. I think I'm probably going to lean towards putting the new fenders on. I'm going to get that other one off and see what we have. But, you know, just to kind of explain, that's how we determine repair versus replace in this trade. You know, it's the same with anything. It's just like when a car gets written off. <clears throat> Is the car worth $5,000? Well, it's got, you know, $4,000 in repairs. Are you going to fix it? Still worth five grand. But in an insurance case, what they look at is repair cost minus salvage that they can recover. So if they can get, I mean, they wouldn't get $1,000 for a $5,000 car in salvage, but if they say, just say it was a $5,000 car, they're going to get 1000 bucks in salvage. At least $4,000 can be spent towards repairs. That's the way these things are determined. It's the same with any body panel, you know this door I need to repair. I mean, that's not bad. It's dented pretty good, but that's definitely not going to warrant replacing the door as far as cost goes. This back door we're replacing because this one's all rusted out. It's not worth fixing, but so anyway, so I've moved on a little bit to, I've just started kind of fitting up this door. So I've taken the striker out. Now, anytime you're really trying to align something like this, it's way out of whack. Just take the striker right out of there. So you're not fighting that. So you can see we're tipped way ahead. We saw that before. Uh, I took the fender off, so we've got lots of access to the bolts. I've already loosened off these hinges and I put a little pressure on the bottom. And actually I snugged up one bolt there. So now what we're gonna do is let the pressure up there and kind of let this door go back that way and see if we can get it into place. So let's just see where we're gonna end up here. See that actually sort of dropped down, not bad, but the entire thing, if you look at that belt hole and the entire thing is down, so the entire door needs to come up. So I'm gonna move my jack ahead and lift more at the front of the door. until we get it where we want it. Well, a little more fitting and messing around. Got the door pretty good. You can see our gap is still getting just a little wider towards the top. But it opens and closes nice, so I just need to fine tune it a bit, but I'm gonna wait until I've got the other rear door. Uh, no point doing final fit on everything until I have the panels that I'm gonna actually be using on the truck. So I'm just gonna move on to doing a bit more tear down. This door's all gotta come apart because I am fixing that big old dent. You can see it's a nasty one. And we'll be actually doing the inside of all of the doors as well. So I'll be taking these out and sandblasting the bottoms, other than this one, because it's too far gone. But the others are okay. So, let's move on to that, pulling our interior panels and such off of there. Uh, so we can start getting the mirror and handles and everything out of the way, and we'll start fixing some dents. 
Well, I've jumped ahead with a little more tear down, a little more fitting, and our used door in place. Now I've got the lines decent where I'm happy with them. I'm gonna move on to fixing these dents. Now, I don't know how well you can pick that one up, but it's a big dent here, but I think it's gonna come out nice. Now the problem is the used rear door a customer brought me is clean, it's not rusty, but Let's see if we can pick this up in the camera. This thing is hammered. It is, it is dented one end to the other. Like the whole damn door. So, it's not the end of the world. I'd rather fix dents than rust. But that door is basically going to need to be stripped and skim coated with body filler, this entire panel. So you can see we've got a pretty good one there. But yeah, I just, I just don't know if this picks up in the camera. It's hard to catch in the lens. But you know, it's no real deep dents, but it, it's just, it's the entire door. So, I'm gonna start with that one. And then we'll move on to this because we're not doing a whole lot other than just stripping this thing down and putting filler on it. I'll probably pull a couple of these sharp ones, but that's it. And if you're going to say, like, oh man, you can't do that. You can't put body filler on the whole panel. Sure you can. There's nothing wrong with it. If you use it right, there is nothing wrong with body filler. You know, if you're going to go ahead and try and fill that with filler, then you're going to run into serious problems because that's way too deep. But, uh, yeah, I'll try and find something here to kind of show you guys. Oh, let's try this. There we go, that picks up better. So you can see how big of a dent that is in that door. That's not really gonna help us on this one. Yeah, there's lots of dents. Lots and lots of dents. One big dent. Anyway, let's start fixing dents. So even though this door panel is off, I've got this door stripped down. There isn't very good access to get into this one. It's got an anti-intrusion beam and then there's a support right at the front. Everything's kind of in the way. So we're going to use a pin welder. And pull this guy out. Oh, little brass pins. Let's go in this machine here. So stud gun, pin welder, unispotter, whatever you want to call it. these guys you want to just slowly work the dent out. You don't want to just start reefing on it. Reefing a bunch of high spots. reef on it, but you want to just keep working it.
another little row of pins just down over here. We're still dipped in, in a bit there. But I won't record all of that. I'll bring you guys back for the next step. There's our front door dent ready for some body filler. So it all came out pretty good. It's not gonna take much. Now I'm just gonna move on to that back door. I'm pretty much gonna strip the entire thing. I'm gonna hammer out a couple spots and maybe pin a couple spots and strip that whole thing like that because it's gonna get skimmed completely with filler. So here's our spots ready for filler, guys. So uh, this one was straightforward. We went over that. Now this door I didn't show you a whole lot of because it's just a bunch of small dents. Now, like I said, I'm going to skim. I said I was going to skim the whole door, but I mean, it's not the whole door. It's most of the door. But now when you run into something like this, now you see this had dents here and here and here and here, and there was dents up here. If you try and fix each of those dents individually, and I've seen guys do this so many times, they'll grind this spot and this spot and this spot and this spot, and put filler on them, then you end up with just a wavy mess. You're way better off to just go big, fill everything. Most of that body filler, you're taking off anyway. It's only really staying where we've got these few low spots. So while it might look like a lot, completely skimming this door, it's really not much filler. So, you know, in most places, it's gonna be no thicker than what the primer is gonna be when we get to that. So, that being said, I'm going to go mix up some filler, get our first coat on all of this. Uh, yeah, one up there. And then we'll move on to something else for a bit. So all my body filler is setting up on the other side. I thought I'd start tearing this side apart. Now, if there was any question about this needing front fenders. Now, I think that side, other side, had work done in the past. So that was probably a, a new fender at some point, because it's still not bad. But, as you can see, I pulled the flare off of this one. I mean, it just took the whole bottom of the fender with it. And, yeah, see, that's... Yeah, that one's definitely had it. So, we're definitely changing the fenders. Just a little tip here for you guys. Of course, the air compressor comes on. So I've got a little bit of a low spot here where I can tell I'm gonna need a little bit more filler. So I always like to do these, add some filler before I've sanded all my filler completely down. That way you're still, now if I sanded this down to where I was done sanding it and added more filler, when I go to sand this filler, I'm gonna be taking the filler around it down that little bit so it's going to take away from the straightness of the panel. So if you add your filler before you're done sanding, now we're still taking all of this filler down uniformly. And incidentally, this is that color changing filler, so it goes on pink like this. It turns this sort of light green when it's ready to sand, so in case you're wondering why that's so different. But, so yeah. A couple of little spots I'm going to hit with a little bit of filler and then we'll continue sanding. Well, we're a little bit into the next day here, guys. Uh, got the doors, pretty much body work done, everything sanded back, basically ready for primer. Um, but what I'm going to do now is actually back this truck outside. Now I have cleaned off the 
rockers the best I could, but I think I would like to just dust them with the sandblaster. So I figured while I do that, I'll just stick a big cardboard in the door and I'm going to sandblast the bottom of all four doors uh, while they're on the truck. Normally I would take them off. I probably still will take them off for painting, but this way, um, easier than carrying them all outside and setting them up to sandblast because these things are heavy. So I'm going to do that, get everything cleaned off, then we'll get it uh, get swept up in here, get it back inside, and move on to our next step. Okay, I just got in from sandblasting, which is one of the really awesome jobs of this trade. So inside of our doors and rockers are all cleaned up. So I'm just going to show you one little tip. I've showed you guys this before, but uh, a little bit of aerosol etching primer. Now, I don't typically trust this stuff for longevity. This is a temporary thing as far as I'm concerned. But, so once you've got all this stuff sandblasted, so you see these deep pits where the rust was, that's going to flash rust. You know, I bet you, because it's damp outside, it's been raining, I bet you within 15 minutes this is going to be turning all brown. So, I always just take and just dust a coat of this aerosol primer over stuff like that. If it's not pitted, the metal is typically good. Let me see, even this used door that was pretty good is uh, pretty pitted as well. So, that is just going to keep this from flash rusting until such times as I get in there and I'll sand it all back off, then I'll epoxy and paint and then treat the inside of the door at the end of the job too. So, so I'm going to do the other side. And I actually need to run to town and pick up some freight. And then when I come back, I'll probably peel these doors off and get some primer on the outside of them. And then hopefully by the end of the day, get all four doors painted on the inside, on the bottom. Well, I've got to pick up my new fenders too, so those will need to be entered. So yeah, there's going to be a whole bunch of inner paint to do. That used door needs to be painted complete inside, the other three just on the bottom. So we'll come back to that in a bit. Well, that's the next day again. We've got some stuff set up in the booth. So our doors are straightforward. These will just get some epoxy primer on the bottom inside lip and then a couple of coats of paint and the fenders. So the fenders, I'm just going to give them two complete coats of primer and then paint the inner parts and then we'll go on the truck and we'll just prep them on the truck. Um, these could be sealed and painted, but these, these have a few, a few spots that could use a little primer. So you can see sometimes these aftermarket parts are not perfect, but nothing wrong with them. So I'm going to go ahead and start mixing some primer and start doing some spraying.
with a little end of day check in there guys uh, it's the end of wednesday now so i've got the cab basically ready i'm going to put it in the booth in the morning i'm just going to do a couple coats of epoxy on the rockers and a couple coats of paint so i ended up just instead of just painting the bottoms i went right up into the door gems since the doors are off just does a nicer job and like i mentioned this fellow is a good customer so uh, roof of the truck, I'm not showing that because I'm painting it, just cleaning up a little bit of rust, but the roof is dented one end to the other. So, painting a very dented roof, but getting rid of the rust. So, uh, it's honestly just not worth fixing if it was, you know, I mean, it's a farm truck, it's a work truck, it's fine. But if it was that job, it would probably need a roof skin, to be honest. And then today I just sprayed up all the inners. So the fenders are primed, inners painted. Now the three doors, I just cleaned up the rust, painted the bottoms. The used door was a different color, so it's obviously had to be completely painted inside. But that gets rid of all the rust on the truck. So in the morning, I'll get that cab in here. I hope that thing fits in here with that big deck on it. I think it will. Uh, and yeah, we'll go from there. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. Hello everybody, next day again. So as you can see, I've got our big Dodge masked up in the booth. So this one's pretty straightforward. The way I'm gonna do it is a couple of coats of epoxy primer over our bare metal, and then a couple of coats of white paint. So kind of, yeah, doing this one the uh, the work truck way. Same on the roof. I am just going to epoxy and paint. Now, if I was making that roof nice, I would prime it, sand it, and then paint it. So make sure it's all really nice and smooth. But I think, like I mentioned, this roof is dense one end to the other. We're just getting rid of the rust. And there was a couple of actually holes in the roof that were drilled for an aerial or something that... Uh, a customer wanted fixed up so at least now the rust will be taken care of you know it'll all be sealed up and painted and it'll, it'll look good i mean let's be honest you don't see up there and she is just a work truck so i'm gonna mix up some primer and let's get spraying Friday, the last Friday of the week. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So, jumped ahead a little bit. So our front fenders, I made a template for our flare holes because these 5500 trucks have the factory fender flares. So, 
I've drilled out holes for them. The truck is out of the booth. The roof and rockers are painted. And as you can see, it's jacked up with the wheels off. So uh, another part of this job, customer wanted the wheels all cleaned up and painted. So I'm gonna roll those outside, get them sandblasted. Uh, it's still really early, so I figure if I get these blasted quick, get them in the booth, get them masked up, get some primer and paint on them, then while those are curing, I can move on to start putting the doors and stuff back on the cab. So that is one thing in this trade. You, uh, If you want to succeed at it, you always need to be kind of thinking that step ahead, you know, with, uh, with this profession. You know, you've got... You've got a lot of downtime. You've always got drying times with primer, with paint, with everything else. So if you always kind of think ahead that, okay, you know, I'm going to prime this and then I can do that. And then while I'm doing that, you know, that can dry and then I could be doing that. So yeah, it's just always, always pays to uh, plan things out a bit in advance. So anyway, I'm going to get these things rolled outside and uh, yeah, sandblasting, fun. That was my daughter headed to work. I just wanted to get some video of her riding a bike. I'm gonna get back to sandblasting. So there's our wheels all blasted and masked up. A couple coats of epoxy primer, a couple coats of paint. Just a quick little check in here, guys. Got the wheels painted, they're curing. Uh, it's Friday today, so they can probably just stay in the booth until next week at this point. Um, so, yeah, doors are on, fenders on the other side. I just thought I would quickly block out the front edge of this door because this is where we did that big repair before putting the fender on, just, uh, just a little easier to block before the fender's in the way. That mark is just from me sliding it on the, the panel stand. Just a little mark in the primer. Well, that fender made me work for it a little bit, but it's not perfect. We're still out a little bit there, but these are aftermarket fenders. They typically aren't bang on in these trucks. So I might try and get that a little better, but uh, yeah, I mean, our gap this way is good. So we're getting close. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the day here prepping, I guess, and we'll see where we get to. 
So here we are ready to paint everybody. So I've got her all masked up. Now this one's pretty straightforward. I am spraying it in single stage. So uh, acrylic urethane. So um, what that means is it's just a direct gloss. It's just paint. It's two or three coats of paint. Uh, not like doing base coat, clear coat, where you've got two or three coats of base coat and then two or three coats of clear coat. Now these trucks were done in single stage, so that's uh, how I will usually redo them when they're a solid color. If it's a metallic, I will do them in base or if I'm doing blends, but in this case it's perfect for what we're doing. So let's get spraying. Last week went for me, we had to move my son back to Vancouver Island for university. We were supposed to be on an 8 a.m. ferry on Tuesday, which brings us back to the mainland, which is at about an eight, nine hour drive home from there. So I thought, oh, Wednesday I'll be back to paint this thing. Get painted Wednesday, together Thursday, I'm done for Friday, no problem. Well, what I showed you was me painting it Thursday because there was a work on the ferry. We got stuck on Vancouver Island the next day. filmed a lot of this and I don't know what happened to it so that's why I'm kind of just giving you guys the update so yes got a giant run in the other door probably because I was feeling like crap I managed to sand it and polish it and at the last possible moment I polished through you could just see a haze of primer so that meant Friday morning I was repainting the other doors also Friday morning or Friday afternoon I got the windshield put in 
So I had this thing pretty much together Friday, but there was no way I was getting it done. And after working a couple of 10 hour days with COVID, I decided I was not finishing it on the weekend. So here we are back to Monday where finally putting this thing together. I'm behind schedule, but it happens. Customer was okay with it. It's more going to screw me up. It's another job sitting outside, which I'll show you guys a little later on probably the next video. So anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um, still kind of feel like crap, but... So keep that in mind if you ever think, hey, I want to be self-employed. It's got ups and downs, man. There's no sick days. There's no vacation days. There's no pension. So you work through pretty much everything, but... I'm not complaining. It's what I chose. It's what I do. So don't take it as me whining. It just is what it is. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to finish cleaning this thing up and we'll do a final walk around because all I really have left is a bit of interior and I'm going to give her a wash and then I am done with this bad boy. All right, slightly behind schedule, but she's all ready to go home to the customer. So this side here, of course, all we did was put the new fender on and painted the rockers. Now oh, I did run the polisher over these other doors just to uh, clean them up, make them look nice. I thought about scuffing painting right through the customer, but there's a lot of dents in these doors too. So I didn't do that. So the steps, I went right up inside, did the full rockers. Inside of all the doors, rust is all cleaned up. Cleans her up nicely. It's a good looking truck now. Got rid of some of those issues. Uh, painted the roof as well. So she's ready to go back to work. So I'm gonna let the customer know it's all ready for him. And I'm gonna pull in the next job and get going on that because it is Monday, which is always a new job around here. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you like this kind of stuff. I mean, I do my best to uh, bring out a video every week, but I've been a little behind and a lot of this stuff maybe gets a little monotonous because it's work that I do over and over again, but of course every job is a little different. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you come back and check out the next one.